What's up everybody? Make sure you stay tuned till the end of this video. I'm going to show you how you can win a Bose A20 headset faux free. So stick around till the end. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Snack Pack and we're back in DCS today. Uh, it's been a little while since I've been in DCS and we're back in the UH60 Lima. And uh, not VR today, just a uh, regular definition because we are going to talk about some avionics. All right, so let's get on a good view here on our center console and I'll show you how all this stuff works. All right, so starting at the top here, you got your storage jettison. Uh, we don't have any stores. Here's our tail wheel lock unlock. We already talked about that. Here's our A-hitters. Now right here, this is going to be our uh, automatic direction finder. All right, it's on ADF. We can tune in a, a uh, NDB. If you watch some of my other videos from uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, I have uh, I got us looking at some NDBs. Hang on a second, somebody's taking off around me. All right, anyways, I got uh, some NDBs that we've tuned up. So you can tune that up in here and whatever the frequency is, two, three, five, whatever. And then you can listen to it. Um, if you come, or is it, I believe it's nav and auxiliary. So nav should be the ADF. That should be for your, uh, yeah, for your non-directional beacon. All right, and then just under that is the VOR receiver. So in the VOR receiver, we can tune up a VOR frequency. All right, you can tune it up right here. You got your uh, first three digits, and then right here you got your second three digits. And uh, and then if we want to listen to the Morse code, we'll go into the aux button right here, right? All right, cool. So I've just turned these off because uh, we're not going to be using any nav aids today. But if we were using nav aids, we would come over here on our HSI and what you'd want to do is for bearing two you could type in either VOR or ADF and that little orange needle right there that's going to point to whichever one of those you want to navigate to right so the number two bearing pointer is either for the VOR or the ADF the number one bearing pointer is for the GPS and we'll talk quickly about the GPS there's a lot to it and uh, some of the things um, some of the things about this GPS are not quite correct right so usually if I push F1 I should be able to go direct to somewhere and uh, there's a couple functions that are missing however it's all it's pretty pretty accurate all right so uh, the main thing is down below here this bottom knob you really only want that either on lat long or MGRS right MGRS is going to give you the military grid reference system and obviously lat long gives you lat long also in MGRS you're going to be working on um, kilometers per hour and using kilometers as your measure of distance. And then with lat long, you'll be using knots and nautical miles, right? So um, up at the top, there's a lot of uh, lot of different switches here. Usually you wanna just be on distance bearing time, all right? And this is gonna tell you to the next waypoint, how long is it gonna take, how far is it, what's the bearing, and how long is it gonna take us, right? And so with these buttons right here, increase and decrease, you can increase and decrease through the flight plan, right? So if I look, my number one needle is pointing behind me right now to a 2-4, and then if I plus up, it's gonna take me to the next point in the flight plan. Same thing, but let's turn GPS on right here. Let's plus up a few here, see if it gets us to a different, well, I got, ah, here we go. So then the next one, now it's pointing ahead of us, so we just plus up through the flight plan. I'm not really sure what the default flight plan in here was, but um, if you want, you can go to waypoint, and then it'll give you the exact grid for all these points. So the point one is called MIZ1, right? And then here is the military grid reference coordinates for that. If I switch to lat long, now it gives it to me in lat long. And this is pretty much all you really need to know. Um, it can get a, a lot more advanced than that. Like, for instance, uh, I like to use the ground speed page to figure out what my ground speed is. This is handy for if you're trying to get somewhere uh, right at an exact time. You want to use ground speed to help you out with that, right? Um, all right, cool. So there is a little bit about the GPS. Maybe I'll do another video that goes more in depth than that, but that's pretty much all we need to know. All right, coming over here, we're not going to talk about this guy. <laughs> so the next one is the UHF radio, right? And before we even get to the radios here, let's talk about the ICS panel. 
So we have all these little switches here, right? One, two, three, four, five. If the switch is up, that means we are listening to that radio, all right? Now this knob, this is for transmitting, all right? So if I just want to listen to radios one and two, I'll just push three, four, and five down, all right? Obviously, I've got a volume knob here. And then if I want to transmit, I can just move this knob, say, okay, I need to talk to somebody on radio one, which happens to be this radio right here, actually, uh, this radio over here, FM one. Um, and then if when I transmit, it's going to be this little trigger right here on the cyclic. That's how I'm going to transmit on my radios, right? So obviously, if you're a DCS player, you got to bind it up to whatever you have. But I'd recommend for realism, if you're playing the UH-60, I'd uh, bind it up to your uh, to your little joystick or whatever you're using. Uh, I'm using the Thrustmaster Hotas Warthog uh, joystick and throttle, so I've got my uh, my trigger uh, paired up to transmit right here. And then it actually has a up button. Uh, you can move the trigger up and then you can just talk on ICS to anybody in the cockpit right and then let's see if we modeled it now there should be a little floor switch over here where we can also talk on on uh, also transmit and talk on ICS so just on ICS if I pull my trigger I'm just going to talk to any other people in the cockpit but once I go to COM1 now I'm transmitting on the radio so many a times I have uh, and also it wouldn't change the other guys radio if you, you can see when I move this one the other one moves that's that's wouldn't happen in real life we they'll work independently of each other for each pilot so all right so com one is going to be this FM radio right here all right com two is going to be this UHF radio right here ultra high frequency and you can see by the numbers we're in a UHF range com three is going to be this VHF radio and then COM4 is the second FM radio or FM2, all right? So that's just kind of how we have it set up. Now, COM5 can be hooked up to some other stuff, and we'll talk about it at a later date. But we'll just turn that off for now. Like I said, auxiliary is how we listen to the uh, NAV, our, um, and, uh, sorry, VOR frequency, whether it's a VOR or a localizer, whatever we have tuned up in here, we'll be able to listen to a Morse code on there. And then NAV is for our automatic direction finder in the case that we want to tune in an ADF. I'm sorry, an NDB. All right, cool. So moving right along, let's come to our Fox mic radios. Now we have presets here. Looks like there's some stuff preset. But if I just go on manual, I can type in, I should be able to type in a frequency. So frequency 41 dot about 250, enter. Cool, now I'm talking on 41.25, right? There's also a couple other, this is single channel, SC, it should always be in single channel. And then you got frequency hop over here. All right, so that's pretty much it. And then you can put in uh, presets. Let's see if the presets work here. I believe we go freak clear, and then four frequency, nope. Yeah, it's not letting me do it. So I'm not quite sure how they load them in the uh, in the sim here, how to load presets. Uh, I'd have to look in. I think there's a little user guide. But um, uh, should be. We come over here. Oh, yeah, sorry. You go to load, I believe. Freak clear. And then I should be able to start typing stuff in here. But it's not letting me. Okay. No worries. So anyways, that's how we load a frequency in here, right? Just hit freak. And then type in whatever your UHF or sorry your uh, FM frequency is going to be, right? 38.450. Enter. All right, cool. And we got two of those. So remember that first one, COM1. So if I want to listen to it, I put up COM1 switch. If I want to talk on it, I move my knob to COM1, and then I use my trigger to transmit. All right. Now same thing with this radio. If I want a different frequency over here, I go to frequency. 40.50. Uh, I got to do the full thing. Enter. Okay, cool. And then I want to listen to that. I go COM4 switch up. If I want to talk on it, I move my ICS knob to 4, use my trigger to transmit. All right. And then it's so much more intuitive in a mic model helicopter because there's just one consolidated FMS. 
uh, much like in an airline or a, you know more advanced aircraft. And you can just say, hey, COM1, I want this. And you just type it in. You don't have a separate control head for each radio. But, you know, these were, uh, this is an older, older helicopter, older technology. And honestly, it works just fine. It's just a little more stuff to do. So right here, I would have this, uh, it defaults to main, but I would have it on both. And what that means is that we're listening to whatever frequency is on here. And we're also listening to the guard frequency, which is 243.0. All right. I have that right. Yeah, 243.0. I always have to do the math. 121.5 times 2. All right, so 243.0 is guard, so we're listening to both right now. And then, obviously, I have a little volume knob here. And then we can be on manual or we can be on preset. So if I go on preset, I should have uh, presets up here. And typically, what we would do is we would have a number of frequencies um, on like a little card that we'd make a little Excel sheet and say like, hey, these are the frequencies we use a lot around this area. So let's just preset those into all our helicopters and then we have a little list, right? And then it's like, hey, great, if I want to talk to tower, that'll be on COM3, you know, ground's on COM2, ATIS is on COM1, whatever it is, right? So we can go move through our presets and that makes our lives easy. Or if we need to put in a uniform frequency manually, here we go. We got three or two for the first digit, and then we can adjust the second and third digits appropriately. There we go. And then this last one, this last knob is going to move it, the last two decimals, it's either going to be 255075 or zero, right? That's all we get. So there's some frequencies that we actually can't tune in, especially in Europe. There's a lot of uniform frequencies that'll end. It'll be like 245.53. And like, we can't do that. <laughs> so we had to file a special special uh, code on our flight plan saying that we didn't we couldn't actually tune in a lot of those frequencies so again this uniform radio is com2 and look at this here we go they even have little presets here i guess they wrote in the presets channel frequency they got little stuff s s etched into there so you know you can do that and then you can load presets manually which is kind of a pain in the neck so all right and then our final radio down here is our uh, VHF radio. And this one is just uh, it's, it's a load of fun. All right, so first, first two digits, right? One, two, one point five. And then same thing here, two, five, five, zero, seven, five, or zero, right? That's all we get. And again, this is on manual, all right? But then if we put it on preset, now we have presets here. And we're using this little knob right here to go from preset. Uh, it should have 20 presets, right? And then this COM right here is going to be COM3. We want to talk on COM3, listen on COM3. That's how we do it with our ICS box. All right, cool. So I binded my uh, little hat switch on my HOTAS throttle, my Thrustmaster Warthog throttle here, uh, for the increase and decrease button. So if I hit increase... There we go. I'm going to plus up through the flight plan. And then accordingly, you can see that plussing up over here, you can see my number one needle moving around, right? And when I turn on my nav right here, I have my mode select on Doppler GPS. Now you can see I'm starting to get uh, distance. So kilometers, 2.2 kilometers. You can't change this to nautical miles, unfortunately. All right, so with that, let's take off and go follow our flight plan. Just coming over to runway here, get some ground effect. We'll get uh, sort of like a pseudo level acceleration takeoff going here. I'm gonna put in a little forward cyclic trim. All right, and then my flight plan just plussed up. So you saw my little yellow needle there. Flip forward, now I know it's five kilometers and I just need to head towards that yellow needle. I can even plus up again and I can see Okay, it looks like it's going to be a right turn next, right? So I just plussed up just to see where it was going, and then I plussed back down. Increase, decrease, switch. All right, it looks like this pond is probably going to be my next waypoint here. It says I'm about 1.2 kilometers away. Probably the center of this pond, if I had to guess. Maybe the edge. All 
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and plus up my flight plan. Clear right. All right, I hope that was an informative video on how the avionics package works in the UH-60 Lima helicopter. Hey guys, make sure you like and subscribe this video. Uh, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. I'm gonna do something huge once we get to 10,000. Speaking of subscribers, I was recently on a podcast called the Pilot's Lounge Podcast from Brotalian. Brotalian is a really awesome organization. They have an online store with apparel that's very popular. Um, they also have the Pilot's Lounge Podcast, and they also have the Blue Skies Foundation, which we were able to raise uh, about $150 for back in November, um, just from ad revenue from uh, this YouTube channel. Uh, but anyway, they are trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Guys, once they get to 1,000, they're going to give away a Bose A20 headset, just like this one, all right? Super high quality, and they're just giving it away brand new. So I would highly recommend you go check out Brotalian and like and subscribe to their videos. There's a link to the podcast uh, that I did with them in the description here uh, talking about evaluation prep. So go give them a holler. Check out their videos. There's a lot of really cool content on that channel, and uh, they're growing rapidly, right? And also go check out their store. they got a lot of cool stuff there, so... All right, make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Snack Pack out.